the new Chinese leadership in the wake of the 18th Congress and next year's uh, uh, March National People's Congress is going to face a very daunting set of issues, as this first panel really uh, highlighted. Uh, economically, they're going to have to take major moves to begin serious structural reform of the economy. And otherwise, economic growth is not, not only going to be increasingly inefficient, but also increasingly socially destabilizing. Uh, this is going to require taking on major vested interests, both among the large state-owned enterprises and elite families that they are connected with, a kind of marriage of wealth and power, uh, and also among local officials from the provincial level all the way down to the township level, which is a huge bureaucratic mass of powerful individuals uh, who do not have, on the whole, a strong interest in the kinds of reforms that need to be made. Uh, beyond that, I th would argue they will have to, that one of the Q&A uh, issues that came up speaks to this a bit uh, from the last panel, they're going to have to change the norm of decision making at the top. Uh, currently, you have a Politburo Standing Committee of nine members with a division of labor among them, so it isn't that they're all doing the wrestling with the same set of issues. Each effectively represents a huge bureaucratic and or economic uh, apparatus in China and a norm of decision-making that is consensus decision-making. And what you have when you have nine people with different responsibilities, each having enormous power by virtue of their position, having to reach a consensus to get a serious decision made is you can get agreement to spend more money because I'll spend more, I'll spend more money in your area if you'll support spending more money in my area. But impossibility of getting agreement to for things that involve major structural reforms that will really seriously disadvantage any of the nine, you know, any of their bailiwicks. And we've seen the results of that uh, under the Hu Jintao One Job Bao administration. Uh, I think that has to change. Uh, it has to change if, if the Politburo Standing Committee is going to be able to both reach and then have the political capital and will to implement uh, decisions that will uh, seriously challenge the major vested interest among local leaders and among major state-owned enterprises and elite families with which they are connected. That is a very tall order. Uh, I think, therefore, that Xi Jinping, once he is in office, is going to be overwhelmingly focused on domestic issues. Uh, keep in mind that a Chinese leader, unlike an American presidential candidate, Chinese leader does not become widely known, prestigious, and respected, and then becomes the leader. You become the leader, and then you build your reputation and respect. Then you acquire your political capital, right? Uh, so it's just a very different system. She will be tremendously concerned with garnering the political capital necessary to take on the issues that panel number one highlighted so vividly. Right? Against that background, uh, I suspect, I may be wrong, I suspect he will really want to tamp down international tensions, especially tensions with the United States, because we're the biggest player out there, uh, and see things smoothed over quite a bit. Regardless of whether that's true or not, if a U.S. president takes the opportunity next year to get much tougher on China, in President Romney's terms, if he becomes president, the way he has articulated it, to, to teach China that they can't push the U.S. around, right? Our market is so big and so consequential, we can name them a currency manipulator, we can slap on additional measures, and they will bend, right? I think, in fact, the incentives would be overwhelming for Xi Jinping to push back extremely hard.